been a while since I made a video, but I felt like I was supposed to make one today. So while I'm cleaning up the shop, I'm just going to do some rambling and uh, hope you guys catch something. There's a mess. There's something on my mind that's been bothering. There's something I've been thinking about a lot lately, and that is that the reason our society is falling apart is because the government, the school system, media, everyone is coming against dads and men and you know what they're trying to crush the young guys before they even make it to sort of any sort of you know anything and here's the facts if you take responsibility away from young guys it cripples them you know what we used to do was when kids were 13 14 they went and got a job or whatever and you know they learned responsibility and now that's just all out the drain and it just doesn't kids are just suffering these days so I want to encourage you guys if you are a dad or you are a young guy take time to pour in to the younger guys you know growing up I um, had a couple guys at church that would always shake my hand and treat me like a man and it just changed the game for me because I always just thought I was a man because of them I had some struggles in high school with some stuff but like when you treat young guys like men from a young age, it just changes everything. That's the, that, and that's the problem. If you treat a 12-year-old like they're a 20-year-old, they're going to succeed. If you treat an 18-year-old like we do today, like a 9-year-old, just send them off to high school, which is pretty much just daycare for big kids, let's be honest, it'll just, it just cripples them. In my opinion, kids, well, especially guys, young men should start working at like 12, 13 years old, like, or even younger, just that's what we're made to do and that's how you're gonna be fulfilled. Listen, you will not be fulfilled playing video games. You know, you can have fun playing video games and that's all good, but if that's all you do, and if you're a dad and that's all you do in your fun time, you're just crippling your boys, if you have little boys. See, the thing is nowadays dads don't even spend time with their kids. You know, and I've, I've, I've been bad at that myself. In the last six months, I've just been learning. It's like, it's on me to be a good dad. And that is a huge responsibility that us dads have. So pour into your kids. Don't be a wimp. Go to work. And another thing you got to do as a man is actually talk about your feelings. You know, everyone just... You know, it's always been like hold it in and be be all tough and everything. No, the fact is this: you got to be real with your kids. Like my daughter's three year old. My my oldest one's three, and I already, you know, I she sees me and my wife argue. She sees these things, and we always explain it to her, because lots of kids don't ever learn how to deal with conflict because their parents just don't know how to communicate. So. Communicate with your kids. The other thing you got to do is hug your family and actually tell your family and your kids and those around you that you love them. It makes people feel awkward, but when I am talking to someone and they, let's say they, someone does something nice to me or I just say, and like I have a relationship with them, I'll say, you know, I love you, man. Like just to my friends, like to my guy friends, I'll just say that because you don't know. They might not have ever heard that from their dad before. And people don't talk about that. They don't, they, they think it's weak or whatever to say, yeah, I love you, man. The truth is, if you do, tell them. Like, people don't ever say anything anymore about what they're actually, you know, feeling on the inside. They just hold it all in and, you know, hope people get the message. But the fact is this, you got to verbalize it. It's just, it's just a fact. Something else I wanted to say is like, I think in the world, a lot of people wonder, you know, how am I supposed to pray? Like, what does prayer look like? It's like, I don't even know if I believe in God, but sometimes you just have a rough situation, a rough day, and you're like, I've got to pray. Well, thankfully, Jesus made it pretty clear on how we're supposed to pray. And if you're familiar at all with Jesus at all, you've probably heard the Lord's Prayer, which is our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread. 
Forgive us our trespasses as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we read that, we, we, we say that, and we're like, hmm, that's pretty good. But what people miss is that Jesus was actually giving us a template on how, this is how you should pray. And there's a few steps into that. So if you're ever wondering, oh, I don't know how to pray or I don't know what to do. First of all, what's the first part of the prayer? The first part of the prayer is acknowledging who you're praying to, our Father in Heaven. You know, God created us all. He's our Heavenly Father. So we acknowledge Him. And then what we do? We give our will over to Him. I think oftentimes when we're praying, we... We are just coming to him for something we want. Or rather, his will is always the best will, best plan for our lives. So it's like, your kingdom come, your will be done. Okay, we're giving our will over to him on earth as it is in heaven. So after we've recognized him and given our will over to him, then that's when you make your request. Give us today our daily bread. And what's, what, even in that, what's it saying? It's saying, give us today what we need. You know, sometimes it is, it's totally defined to pray for things that you want, but Jesus just prayed, prayed for what you need. Don't worry about tomorrow. It'll, you'll be, you'll be fine. Then after that, it says, forgive us. So after we've recognized him, we've given our will to him, we've made a request. Now, if there's anything in your life that you need to bring before him for forgiveness, that now is the time. Bring that before him. And forgive those that you need to forgive. And after that, it says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. What is that saying? It says, Help us, you know, in our lives, deliver us from the evil one. I want to tell you some facts here. When you are dealing with a difficult situation at work or in church or anything with family, with all that crap with COVID and all that, what you were up against actually was spiritual warfare. And people don't understand that. They think, oh, I'm always just fighting against this stupid person at work and I hate their personality. No, in Ephesians, it actually talks about how we're up against spiritual stuff. So when it says deliver us from evil, keep that in the back of your mind when you're dealing with people. Here's the truth. If you keep that perspective of when you're dealing with difficult people, you're, you're not necessarily dealing with just that personality, you're dealing with a spiritual force behind them, it makes it easier to love the person because you recognize they might be under attack. So, we've done all that, we've thanked, we've recognized the Lord, we've given our will to Him, we've made our request, we've forgiven others, we've asked for forgiveness. We've asked him to protect us during the day. And then what does it end with? It ends with the same thing. Giving praise. Giving recognition. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. You know, we worship at the end. So when you want to structure your prayers, just follow that template. Recognition. Hand your will over. Request. Forgiveness. Protection. And then thanks. Thanks recognition again and if you follow that template for your prayers then if you're ever worried about you know I don't know how to pray now you know so that's one of the other things I wanted to say and the other thing is this if you are a person and you're struggling in your life and you you don't know if you are walking with the Lord if you're walking righteously or you know and this is for anyone Now, the other thing I want to say is this. If you're a guy out there and you're struggling with, like, I don't know what the Lord's plan is for my life. There's one simple step that you can do that will naturally just push you into his plan. And, 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 and you'll start to see things start to happen. That's, that's one thing, and that is this. You've got to delight in him. And what does that mean? It means to be spending time with him in his word. Listen to this. If I don't know you, and I was to write a book about myself and how I wanted to get to know you and what I loved and what I hated and these different things, and someone else gave you this book and you read it, and I called you a month after you were done reading the book, and you'd never heard my voice before, and you never actually met me in person, but I called you up and you heard my voice, and I didn't tell you who I was on the phone, probably within 10 seconds you would know exactly who I am because you've read my book. The number one reason people don't hear from God, 
you know, outside of reading his word is because they don't actually know who he is. So if you want to hear from God, you first of all got to read his word to you. And, and as you read his word, you'll get to know his voice. And then when you hear his voice, you'll recognize it. Because we've got, you know, crap flying through our minds all the time. And who knows if it's actually God or not. But the truth is, you can know that it's him 100% if you are in his word. And the other thing is this, if you're ever wondering, well, am I walking in God's path? Well, this is the thing. If you are walking in the God's path for your life, naturally fruit will just appear. So if you look at your life and you see fruit, it's like you have, you have, you have people that love you. You, you have, you know, you're producing fruit. You're pouring, you have opportunities to pour into other people. You are, have opportunities to be generous and you're doing these different things, like fruitful things. You can look back when you're having discouraging days and be like, well, I, I know that the Lord's using me to produce fruit. And if you're producing fruit, then you know that you're walking in his path for your life. So to sum up this whole video, first of all, let's be men who love our families, love others who are kind, generous, but also stand for truth and build in to the younger guys. Two, let's know how to pray and let's pray regularly. And three, let's delight ourselves in the Lord because that is the only way to actually be wise is by delighting ourselves in him. I hope you enjoyed this little blip. Share it with your friends. Because this is a message that everyone needs to hear. You know, like, we need to be firm and, and, and manly and godly. But we also need to know how to pray. And we also need to delight ourselves in Him. And that is how your life will be fruitful. All right. I have some more videos coming up soon with truck stuff. I'm excited about that. But been busy lately. As you can see, we got the hoist in here. It's been pretty slick, not going to lie. We'll see you guys in another video. Have a good day.